Hey everyone, Andrew Chelman here with MachineSkills.com. As always, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, stay tuned on our website so you don't miss any free machine tutorials. In this video, I want to cover the zone menu in Machine Sampler, and we covered a little bit of this in our sampling overview for Machine 2.0, but I want to go into a little bit more detail, maybe take things a little bit slower, just so we can understand the, uh, the full potential of this menu. So first things first, how do we actually get into this menu? Well, going to um, start by clicking this little waveform icon here and heading over to the zone menu in this uh, this fourth option over here. And you can see once we open this up, we have this little keyboard down here and on this area where some menus will appear once we actually have a sample loaded up. And I'm just going to uh, just drag my sample from my browser onto my sound slot over here. That's just the, uh, the normal way that I load a sample up. And once I do that, you can see that things look quite a bit different. We have this uh, shaded orange rectangle on our keyboard area as well as all of these menus down here where we can um, scroll through and go through the different options. So first of all, the play range is um, pretty similar to the edit menu, these uh, start and end points. So it's just going to change the actual uh, points of your sample that will play. And you also have this loop menu over here. And it's important to note that this will only work if your amplitude envelope settings are set to something other than one shot. So um, right now I can't actually use those loop functions, but they are there if you want to work with something other than one shot. Um, also, you have some tune and mix options, so this is nice for changing the pitch of your sample, the loudness, as well as the panning and the root key. And if you're not familiar with the uh, concept of a root key, when you actually trigger this key, it will play the sample in its original pitch. So um, any, any notes below the root key will play a, a sample that's pitched down, and on the contrary, any notes on the, on the other side above the root key will play a, a sample that's higher than your normal sample. So um, root key is just going to allow you to play the, the sample exactly as it sounds in your browser. So just that. Moving on, we have some envelope settings, attack and decay, some basic stuff there. And then we have this nice mapping section over here. And this is pretty powerful here, so I want to go into a little bit more detail. First of all, you have your low key and your high key. And these are going to uh, kind of set the boundaries of where your sample will actually play. So if I bring my low key up here, any notes below E1 will not actually trigger my sample. And on the opposite of that, if I have my high key down here, any notes above this won't trigger it. So this is just basically setting the bounds of which notes will actually trigger your sample. And if you probably guessed, we can do the same thing with velocity. So if I can um, drag my velocity up or drag it down from the top. Now any velocities less than 23 or above 101 will not trigger the sample. You have to be within all of these bounding parameters to actually play your sample here. And you might be wondering, well, that's kind of cool, but what are the actual application of this? What can I do? I'm going to go through uh, two different things that I like to do with this. First of all, I like to organize samples by note so I can have several different samples located on one sound slot. And then after that, I can uh, show you how to do the same thing, but with velocity. So first of all, I'm going to uh, start with those samples based on different notes. So I'm going to just keep the sample here and also drag in a couple more. Drag in this one. Drag in this one, and this is just to uh, to show you the concept of what I'm doing. Um, it's not too practical. Um, so you could go through and actually load up all of these and, and then um, move the parameters around and set them on specific notes. But if you don't want to go through all that trouble, you can just select all of them here. Um, if you don't want to go through on the graph, you can just hit your first one, shift with the keyboard, and then click your last one, and then right click over here in this area and click map as drum kit. If I zoom in just by dragging the scroll bar here, you can see that these samples are now all located on individual notes. So um, that's just a quick and easy way to automatically map those different samples to different pitches on your keyboard. And um, if you go on your hardware and then play your first four pads here, it looks like I got that one snare in here twice, but you still get the idea. Um, you can hear that there's uh, different snare articulations based on my different notes. And it's nice because they actually light up as you play them so you can see what's going on. So that's a nice way to, um, to load in multiple samples on only one sound slot. The downside of this is I can't put individual effects on my samples. So for instance, if I only wanted to um, maybe compress one of these snares, I couldn't do that. I'd have to compress the whole sound slot, which would in turn affect all the other snares loaded in here. But um, it has its uses. You could maybe load up a whole drum kit in here and have a lot of samples on only one sound slot. It keeps things pretty nice and compact. Now moving on, I'm going to right click here and then reset this. 
and do some um, some velocity mapping here. So I'm going to go back to my sample menu and load up. I have a nice drum kit that is actually uh, sampled for velocity. So I have some snares here, and I'm going to drag in this first snare, which is set for quiet notes. So I'll just put that anywhere in here, and then my maybe a medium snare here, and then a loud snare over here. So I'm going to just do this graphically here. I want to bring this one down in that range, bring this one in the middle, and then bring this one to the top. And I want all these to have my full range of notes, uh, even though I won't play them. I just kind of do that to keep things looking nice on my graph, I guess. I don't know, up to you. But I'm just going to drag all this out, and then I'm going to make sure these uh, three snares will cover the entire velocity range on their own. So here this one goes from 0 to 36, so I'll start this one at 37 and go up, maybe a little higher here, and then I'll bring this one down to 79. There we go. So now between these three different snare samples, we have covered the entire velocity range. So um, if I go on my hardware, and there we go, we have some problems with our root key. So Let's go and change this all to, um, we need to change our root keys to be on the same note or else these will be pitched differently. So I'm going to just bring it up and put it on, let's put it on C3. And if you don't want to uh, do that parameter adjustment, you can just actually grab it and move it. So again, nice graphical control. Let's put this up there and then bring this one down to C3 as well. So now you can hear that the snare changes in character as I play harder. So just like that, you have some very realistic sounding snares. And you can also apply this to some more non-traditional methods. Um, one instance I can think of is maybe having two melodies that are kind of similar in character, but different notes, and have those triggered based on different velocities. So um, if you had like a keyboard drumming setup going on, you could uh, play two different melodies just by changing the velocity that you strike the pad with. So again, um, this is just the basics of what you can do and just one application of this zone menu in the sampler. I encourage you to uh, to use it in ways that are, are different from what I'm doing here. I just uh, want you to get familiar with the actual controls. So I'm um, take it and run with it and do some, some cool stuff. And let me know if you have any questions and I will get back to you as soon as possible. So again, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned on machineskills.com and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.